All right, today I'm gonna to teach you how to use AU cell to identify cells with active gene sets. So if you have a gene set of interest, a list of genes, and you wanna see which cells are enriched for those genes or are expressing that gene set, we can identify them using AU cell. I'm going to be using it to identify endothelial cells in mouse lung data. So I'm gonna use this Pangoa DB. It's a super useful resource for single cell identity markers. So you can just go to data sets, cell type markers, and apparently you can get an ad. All right, ad, go away. Do I have to actually click you? I guess you do. But let's go to endothelial cells. This is gonna be in vascular. Wow, this site does have a lot of ads, but people use this site all the time. It's cited all the time. So you see we have markers for endothelial cells. And instead of picking any individual ones, we're just gonna download the whole set. So let's just go ahead and get the TSV file. Then I'll just copy that or remove it from the downloads. And then we have to gun zip it. And then for my actual single cell data set, I'm gonna be using data from Tabula Muris, and I'm just gonna directly download the already pre-processed and labeled R object, which I already downloaded. And then we'll go on over to R Studio, and then you can install AU cell through the Bioconductor Manager. And then let's just load Surat in AU cell. And then I'm just gonna load my R object, my single cell data. And I actually have to run a update Surat object just because this is an older version of Surat. So if we look at this TIS, the Surat object, we have 5,400 cells and the PCA and TISNI and everything's already done. And then if we look at the metadata, we see that we already have the cell labels, which is good. We're just gonna use these as confirmation. So let's just plot the TISNI plot. You can see we have endothelial cells here, and there seems to be a small cluster up here as well. All right, let's just read in that TSV that we downloaded from the PangloDB. And it isn't a CSV, it's a TSV, so we need to specify tab delimited. All right, we see that the TSV actually contained all the cell types, not just endothelial cells. So we're just going to have to filter this for endothelial cells. And then we also only want species that have MM. They can be MM and HS, but we don't want ones that are just HS. All right, for some reason it's cutting it off a little bit, but we have 189 genes now. And of course, we didn't need to use PangloDB. You could use any gene set, but you want a decent amount of genes when you're using AU cell. You don't want just a handful. I would say at least 50, so maybe somewhere between 100 and 500 is kind of the sweet spot. I'm sure it varies depending on your data set. So let's just extract these gene symbols from this data frame. We don't actually need the data frame. We, I just need a list of genes. And one more thing, our data set is mouse data, and almost always mouse data will have one capital letter for the genes, and then the rest will be lowercase. So we're going to have to do one extra step here just because we're using mouse data. If you had human data, this might work fine as is. So I'm just going to make a little function that takes every item in this list and then returns the first letter and then a lowercase version of the rest of the gene name. All right, again, I'm just returning a substring just from one to one, which is the first letter, and then a lowercase substring from two to the length of the gene name, and then just pasting them back together and, and returning it. And then I'm just going to s apply this function. 
All right, you see we now have a named list where the genes are lowercase, except for the first letter. All right, now let's actually use AU cell now that we have the gene list and the data ready to go. So first we're gonna make a new object called counts, and this is just gonna be the count data directly from the Surat object, or you could take it from a single cell experiment object if you wanted to as well. So just get assay data, It is slot, not slots. And then we can pass counts to the AU cell build rankings. Should just take a couple seconds, but when it's done, you'll see an output histogram. Hopefully you don't see anything crazy here because you already pre-processed your data and did QC. But now we can calculate the AUC for each cell. So we're just passing that gene list we made and the cell rankings we just made in the last block of code to AUC calc AUC. And here, if something was wrong with your gene set, you would get possibly an error. So here we see that seven of the 189 genes weren't in the data set. I'm not too worried about 4%, but if for some reason your number was really high, you need to make sure your genes actually match the genes in the data set. And I think if 80% of your genes aren't in the data set, it'll just give you an error. So the actual calculations are done, but now we can view the results. We're just going to use the AU cell explore thresholds function, and we're just going to pass cells AUC, and then we want to see the histogram. And we can also pass a sign. All right, so this is actually a really good example for this tutorial because the automatic labeling here didn't do a good job. So usually it'll just put the threshold wherever it, it kind of gets this first dip in the distribution. So we don't have a nice clean bimodal distribution here. We kind of have these three peaks. These cells down here are the ones we actually want. These are most likely not endothelial cells. But if we ignore this mislabeling here, we actually have a very clean threshold right here. We can look at these labeled cells. So it found, I don't know if you can see that, it's kind of hard to see, but there's 2,888 cells it said that were enriched for this gene set, even though it's only the small number down here. If we wanted to just use the automatically labeled cells, we already have those ready to go. In the cell assignment and then gene set and assignment. So this is just now a list of those 2,888 cells. So if it did do a good job labeling, which in this case it didn't currently, you can just use this, but we're just gonna have to do one extra step to change this threshold here. So I'm just gonna make a new cells object. And if you remember, or I don't know if I showed it earlier, if we look at the cells AUC here, you see we have the cell IDs and then also the values under this gene set row. So we can extract all the gene names and then let's just set a threshold of 0.15. All right, so now, <laughs> we have these new cells, which are all the cells to the right of this 0.15 threshold we just made. So how many cells do we actually have? So 453 cells instead of the 2,888. All right, and then let's just go back to the Surat metadata and label all the cells that are now contained in this list of cells within new cells. So this was our Surat object. So we'll just make a new column called is EC. And then we'll do an if else, if the column names of TIS are in new cells, we'll write EC. 
And if they're not, then we'll write non-EC. And then now if we look at the Surat metadata, we see that we made a new column called is EC, and we see a lot of them are labeled non-EC and some are named EC. So let's just plot the Tisney plot and group by is EC. Well, let's compare this to the known labels. So you see using a U cell, we labeled this cluster and even this cluster. And that's exactly what was labeled previously. So we know it did a really good job. Again, AUC is a very useful tool. Instead of endothelial markers, we could have done a different set of markers for a different cell type, or we could just pick a different set of genes completely, such as response to oxidative stress or inflammation. One final point I do want to make though is AU cell doesn't work with every data set or gene set. Sometimes you don't see this obvious peak. Sometimes you'll just get one peak. And in that case, you can't really draw a threshold. The best case scenario is, again, when you get one big peak for the majority of the cells, and then the cells you're interested come off in another little peak. And in this case, a U cell will draw a nice threshold automatically, and you wouldn't even have to do this extra step or manually setting the threshold.